Welcome to my Paint With Me series, people. Today we're gonna to be painting a beautiful barn scenery that was picked by my DIY community. A couple weeks ago, I pulled up some beautiful Pinterest pictures that I found and I let you guys pick and this one won. Now I like to paint on live edge wood or regular wood. If you wanna paint on canvas or whatever makes you fuzzy inside, you go right ahead. I pick up my live edge pieces from this beautiful vendor space in my local art market, which I am also a vendor at. And real quick, before we get into the painting, I do wanna remind everyone, these are meant to be step by step. They're not meant to be sped up in any way. They're very minimally edited. So this way you can follow along the process, know who, what, why, when, Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I do the things that I do and that way if you have questions as I go step by step it's easier for me to comment back with all of you here's the beautiful piece of cherry that I picked out it's got the live edge on both sides absolutely love this piece it is $25 or it was $25 <laughs> and it's roughly about three feet so it is definitely pricey. I do sell these pieces at my vendor space and on my website once I've painted them. And I just like painting on wood. If you guys wanna use canvas or a piece of paper or whatever to recreate this painting, you guys go right ahead. This is just what I like to paint on and what I like to use. I'm gonna cut this off camera and we're gonna get started. Just in case anyone's wondering, this is, that's the wrong side. This is about 11 inches from the edge of the live wood to the edge of the live wood. And then about seven inches is how wide I cut it. You're using an eight by 10 canvas. Roughly you'll be able to create almost identically the same exact size, except the blending. Because we are gonna be blending the sky and the grass into the bottom of our live edge. Now these are the colors I'm going to be using. I took a picture here and I'm going to still it for you. I took several different pictures. So in the event that you want to use the same exact paint, you can use the same exact pieces of paint and you can use the brushes that are similar. These aren't necessarily, you know, anything specific. They're just really what I think I'm going to need, you know, some small detail brushes, a thicker little wedge brush, wide brush, whatever you want to call these. I'm not even like particular and you know, I know the fan brush. That's what I know. Make sure you got you a little bowl with some water to clean your brushes and to also use to kind of spread your paint if you need to. And make sure you have something to put your paint on. If you have like an actual painter's palette thing, you know, by all means. And I got some paper towels to, you know, keep things as clean and tidy as we can here. And this is all preference. Like I said, if you're doing this on paper or cardboard or whatever you're painting on, I'm just showing you what I'm using for the actual wood. And then you can carry out the design with the colors, however you wanna do that at home. We're gonna need to figure out where we want our center at, and then we're gonna go from there. So we want obviously the top to be larger than the bottom. And I'm going to kind of just eyeball this, take our little tape measure here, and then kind of bring it down to where I think we should have it. And I'm going to mark that as soon as I find me a pencil. Oh, that got crooked, didn't it? <laughs> Hold on a minute. There we go. All right. This is just going to kind of set the stage for us in terms of like where our sky and our land intersect and now we're going to need to create our colors and i always like to go in with the darker colors first so for the grass i'm going to start with the english ivy and i'm also going to what is going on <laughs> what in, ew don't touch my plate i gotta get that off there hold on a minute big old snot bugger out of my paint okay here we go now i want to have different colors in the dark so i'm going to mix a little bit of the black over here as well and a little bit of i don't know if i want to do let's bring in the white in case i want to make it this a little bit lighter just actually let's not let's do the antique white and we'll put that right next to the green 
So here's our background color to start with the grass. And then we're going to do the dark colors with the blue. And I'm using mountain blue for that. And to start off, since we're this is our first layer, I'm just going to cut two little pieces of sponge. And we're going to kind of pounce this on here. You're honestly not even going to see this first layer. This painting is so layered. I love when y'all pick out stuff for me because I'm like, always have me questioning my skills here. All right, so then I'm going to mix a little bit of that over here. I'm happy with that. So I mixed a little bit of these two and then a dab of black and we got this. And now I'm just going to kind of go across our line here, getting this one here. And I definitely want it darker than that. I can tell you that now. So, which is another reason why I don't like going in too heavy when I'm doing painting and starting out because you're not sure if the colors are going to blend exactly and no painting you really, I mean, some people can do it almost identical. I try to get it as close as I can. And what I love about blending with a sponge like this is you get those different variations and it looks like it's got different layers in there. And I'm just going to kind of keep bringing this down a little bit with the color that I already have. So it goes throughout the whole bottom. And then we're going to come back in with some other colors as we go along. I'm going to stop here because we're going to blend the rest. But before I start blending, I want to get our top one here. So I'm just going to switch out my sponge and take this one right here. I'm going to take a little bit of this cream color and mix it in with some of this blue and make us a new little color, hopefully. This is really bright. I wasn't expecting this to be this bright. And we're just going to tapity tap, tap, tap all along this. Now I need some black in there. That's way too bright. Way too bright. We need it to be darker down here at the bottom. So it's just me smooshing the colors on the plate. There we go. There we go. And I'm going to keep popping the little picture up here for you guys. So if you're doing this at home, you can continuously have the reference as well and make changes to whatever you feel you want to make changes to. Now, the center of this, I'm not going to go too heavy much else. I just wanted it at the bottom because I want to leave space for our barn and kind of give that like a fresh, clean background. I just kind of did it right here. So this way, if we have any spots, it's blended completely in. And this I'm going to leave kind of open and I'm not going to go too far up with this dark color because if you look at this picture there are so many colors in the sky and I want to try and not kind of cut my own head off here by bringing that dark all the way up when the dark is really only at the bottom where it meets the grass. Next I'm going to take some of this aqua sky and there's two bottles here because one is running low so in case you're like why you got two bottles? It's running low, people. It's running low. Getting low there. Um, try and keep these organized. And um, we're going to need some white. There's definitely white going on in the sky. Oh my gosh, get out of here. There we go. Love that noise. Love it. All right. I moved you a little bit closer up. So I have the bases down right now for our background for the top and the bottom. And now I'm going to go in and blend more. If you look at the painting, you can see there are a multitude of different colors going on in the sky. So I want to try and have a base like we did with the darks. And you want to have a base with the different colors and then come back in and just add different highlights over the colors. And again, I am going to blend this into the wood around it, but that's going to be after I literally have the design that I'm trying to accomplish. 
and I'm sorry if my hand I'm trying to not have my arm in here so if it gets in there please don't be mad I'm very happy with this so now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna blend the sky in and what we're gonna do for that is just by you guys are gonna laugh but this is gonna be super simple take a little bit of water on your finger and you're gonna go around the edge here you're just gonna swirl it and what this is gonna do and this is another reason why I like doing this is it's just going to see how it's wetting that paint it's just gonna blend it up and then we're gonna come back in with our sponge and just tap it tap 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 it out which is fine but when you're using wood it's very absorbent and it allows you to manipulate paint really well people kind of don't give wood enough credit with stuff like this but we're gonna just and it's okay if it gets on the live edge a little bit I'm not too particularly worried about that but I'm not using a sponge because it will over saturate this and I don't want that you know what I mean so I'm just gonna take a minute gently blend these colors out pull it to the edge because I still want my wood to show through just slightly around the edges and make it look like this picture is just kind of popping out here and again this is not everyone's cup of tea you do not have to do this on a canvas or a piece of paper if you want take this exact technique and just pull it to the sides of whatever you're painting skip this whole section entirely that's all you're gonna do skip this section you don't need it if you're doing it on a canvas or a piece of paper just keep on rolling it's a little harsh right here right so we can you know it's blended but then we have these harsh lines so now we are going to take a teeny tiny bit and we're gonna add a little bit of water and now we're gonna swirl and really just tie these two in together so it's no longer a harsh line but just a blended blended area we are going to take some more of this white and we're going to just kind of pop it on around here so that way it really just blends in at this point so you do your first layer you're blending if you're doing the uh what <laughs> losing my words here and then this just kind of brings it out even more the barn itself is probably not going to take us too long and the actual design pieces getting this background blended is always one of the hardest things for me and I try to get these um, you know because you're seeing this as a tutorial right now and I did this in one of my DIY Friday videos and that's sped up you know a couple minutes <laughs> Where this is a little bit longer and even this I'm kind of cutting this down but usually when I do these paint with me is they take anywhere from an hour to three hours for me to sit down and paint the pieces it might not look like it but there are a lot of colors going on in that barn starting with a gray and that's what I'm gonna use for my base color Ew, crusty bits all right and uh, no, it's still in there. It fell in there, you little sucker. All right. All right. We're going to just squeeze a little bit on here. And that's going to be, I'm going to use this as our base for our barn and a little bit of this black that I already have. I'm going to take this brush and bring the black over and just kind of blend it in. So we get a couple different tones in here like that and I'm going to use this ruler to kind of guide us. The barn's rickety, you know what I mean? So it ain't going to be a perfect barn and it this just helps us stay as straight as we can get here. Now I'm just going to bring that line on over. Just striping it like this 
we can make adjustments as we go. And if your paint color changes from each time you do this, don't worry about it. Because like I said, we're gonna we're just getting our bases down here. See how it gave us a nice outline? And I can tell right here I didn't go far enough over. So we're gonna have to make this sucker a little fatter. Because we want to make it blend into that sky. And we want to keep our brush as straight up and down as we can. So here we go. Oh, what is that? All right, now we got to make our Barney bow. <laughs> mm. All right, so be mindful using the ruler. I was going to use a piece of paper, but all right. No line this time. Okay, no line. We're good. Um, yeah, so now I'm just going to make sure that this ruler has got no paint on it. And we're going to bring this over here, put it where we want to stop, and keep going straight over. Keep in mind with the ruler, I keep doing that. We're just going to touch that up at this point. There we go. Nobody ever know. No one. Who's going to know? Who's going to know? No one's going to know. Okay. So I want to do point out. See how these are going up and down. We're going to do completely different strokes on the top. That way you can differentiate between the top of our barn and the bottom of our barn. A lot of people don't realize that sometimes you struggle with painting is just the difference between the stroke of a brush it doesn't have to be layering it doesn't have to be multiple colors it just has to be the exact way that you're trying to paint something so for the bottom part we're going up and down and this doesn't matter for how many of our times we're going to layer it we can go up and down multitudes of time with different colors and get beautiful results we're going to add a couple different colors in here, but we still got to put our door and our windows on. But the bottom of this, the base is done. I'm going to wing this roof. There's different, we're going to see what happens here. We're going to need a drop off and then we're going to need to come in again at the top. And the way that this goes, once you get this layer on here, we're going to have to go back and forth with different colors around the window. So this one is going directly up and down in smaller sections with a lot of white. So I'm going to have to make sure I got more white on my brush this time than I do with the dark color because we got white going on. So here we go. So I'm going to make sure that we're far enough down to where we still have a peak going over. And then this is hanging over slightly. We're just going to start and pull up. And then right next to it, because like I said, it's going up and down and it's in a different color, but it's smaller. We're going to carry this up and then we're going to turn it again. See how we're doing a different angle. And then we're going to stop right there. Oh, we need to do little bit more this way we want to cover up the sky we can touch up little pieces here so don't be as scared to make those mistakes it ain't gotta be perfect to be yours you know what I mean and then we're gonna come down with this kind of stop there now we need to be a little bit fatter. We got to cover up that sky and add more paint, pull down. There we go. And then make sure we have some overhang here down at the bottom of our barn. Here we go. So there's the base. And now we're just going to take our pieces and go up and down inside of our little frame we made here.
let's start with our door here. The door is kind of skinny and lanky, so we're kind of just gonna... There's the base of our door. And you can keep going back over this, obviously, to make it more dominant. But there is our door, and now we're going to make our windows on the side here. We're going to take our ruler again. I'm actually going to switch it. We're going to start from this side. And just pull over like that. And then do the same thing. And we're going to touch all this up. Like I said, we're getting the base down. Is our rickety. What did it say this was? I don't even remember. I have to look that up. See how I'm just taking the paint and just going in the same little area? It's just getting darker. And that's all I'm doing. Now we got two windows that are up here. I'm going to just kind of use this, pull down, and then pull down. For the top, there's like a little square piece. So I'm just taking a piece of painter's tape, and I'm just going to cut a little square piece. And we're just going to put that on there, and we're going to go around with a little paintbrush and just trace, make sure this is obviously you know, dry our right, outline. So this way you don't have to spend too much time trying to be perfect with this. You just use the paint stick as your, or not paint stick, <laughs> painter's type as your guide. I do want to emphasize the fact that I am not a professional artist and I know I have a lot of you pop in the comments. And for those of you that pop in the comments and you offer your amazing tips and your kind comments, I gotta say thank y'all so much for just being amazingly nice to me and the kind information that you offer because people are here to learn and just make things that they love or just hang out with me and listen to my craziness sometimes. <laughs> and um, it's nice to get professional information from artists and things that they may have more knowledge on than I do. It helps people. So... Thank you for that. There we go. At this point, it's really just a matter of how you want to go over to emphasize the details of this entire structure. And I'm going to show you how I do it using different color paints. Around the top, the black kind of blended in a little bit. So I'm just taking a little tiny bit of dry paint. I don't want to mess this up too much. I really like the way this looks. And I'm just kind of dragging the black paint down. You can also like carry it on down if you want. Just make sure that there's hardly any paint on the brush. Around the edges of our roof, we do have a little bit of like a grayish purple going on. I'm not going to go huge with this. I could honestly just leave it, but I'm trying to just show you guys how to do different layers and get that extra look. So I'm just going to take a little bit. It's not heavily saturated in paint, just a little bit. And again, kind of dry brushing around the edges. There are actually a huge amount of white um, 
sections. I'm going to get a tiny brush for this. That way I don't have too much overhang with the white and I don't want it messing up. So I'm busting out this teeny tiny little guy here and we're going to put a bunch of white highlights all over in here. Our barn is all done so now we're going to create our fence and we're going to use a little bit of black and brown and just kind of mix them together to get us a nice little dark brown with some colors in here and our barn our barn our fence <laughs> is going to go over to here and it's actually like right in piece we're going to drag this down a bit and we're going to have the top going across like this and kind of just fade out and kind of put a little nub on top of that fence there we go and see how it just kind of fades out to get that fade out look you just make sure your brush is going like this drag it and then just kind of leave it alone and then it just drags and the same concept you know going this way just take your paint drag it down make your little post of course i'm doing my fence a little bit different I'm not too crazy about the fence that's in there so kind of winging this part and just making my own fence there we go I like the way that looks better there we go let's add a little bit of white on here And the highlights, when you're doing them, it really just gives it a little bit of life. You can use different colors for this. It don't have to be just one particular one. You can see the white and the brown here just kind of bringing it out. I had to get a new plate for this. I do want to kind of let you all know, the grass is going to be the easiest part. And if you really like how this turns out, you can take this idea and create different types of grass scenery with it and you're gonna love it just give you different looks with it so take different types of colors right we're gonna pop some right here and I'm gonna use this brush make sure it's nice and clean and take our green with a little bit of the dark green because we're gonna use these three colors to give us all kinds of colors so we're going to take a little bit of the green and pop this right in here because we got some brightness going on right in this area on our picture. And I'm going to just kind of gently drag that. This is really the only spot that we have some bright colors going on. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of the bright color on its own and pop some pieces in here to give it a different color. and drag this oh that was a little bit too much on the brush there but it's all right and we do have i forgot to even though we're going to use these to make different colors i forgot we do have the purple and the blue kind of in our grass a little bit so we're just gonna take a little bit of that and we're going to smoosh this around down here just to kind of get us some different colors. And I'm just going to use my finger 
to kind of blend that out. These are going to be little spots in the background of our grass, so you're going to barely see this, but they're in the picture, so we're going to just make sure that we're also putting this in here. Here's the fun part. You guys ready for this? You're going to want to use several different sizes of thin brushes like this to create different sizes in your blades of grass. And you're going to then take, remember how I said we're going to mix up some different colors. We're going to use this on its own. Okay, so that already has a pile. And then we're going to take some of this white and get us a different green or this isn't white. This is, what am I telling y'all? I'm lying to y'all. Antique white. It's some antique white. And we're going to get this color over here. We're going to need a little bit more than that. So make us a nice little smoosh of this. And then we're going to take some of this bright color here with the dark green. And then kind of mix that together to get us another color. Oh, I love how that color looks. And then we're going to take a little bit of all three and mix to get another color. So we have three different colors of green that we mix together and then we have the individual colors that we're using. And now we're going to create brush strokes going up. And like I said, use two different brushes. You can start wherever. Oh. Hey, <laughs> be nice if I care that you guys seen it. We're going to just take strokes and go up with our blade of grass. I don't like how that just landed. We're going to come down with our blade of grass. And this is way thicker than I want, but I've already started. So I'm committed at this point. So we're going to have some thick pieces with this brush and the rest I'm going to do thinner ones. I am really happy with this and again you can draw as many little pieces as you want but because I want to kind of keep this as close as I can to the actual painting I want to cover some of this in and I'm just going to do that by taking a little bit of paint and going over not a whole lot and it's just going to kind of blend the pieces in and then these are going to pop out even more once we put our little flowers on here. For the flower aspect we're just going to use the yellow, a little bit of orange because in the center there's like a little dot of orange, you know what I mean, little dots, and then we have the whites and we're going to come back in with that for la the last, but we're going to just come on. I know you're in there. There we go. <laughs> We're going to come back in with that last and let our little centers dry up. And we're going to just, first of all, take some paint and then figure out where we want to put them little suckers and just kind of do a little dot and go from there. Little dots. Just coming back in with the paintbrush and just picking a little side. Nothing... Nobody but me is probably even going to notice this, so if you want to skip this part, go right ahead. I'm just, there looks like there's a dot in the picture, so I'm trying to keep as many things as I can to the picture. I really zoomed y'all in here, and I also really busted out one of my teeniest, tiniest paintbrushes that I have. The pieces of flower are actually coming up like this. So I'm going to try and keep them down as well. And this is all we're doing. We're starting and pulling up into that little space that we have our yellow center. And that's it. And you guys can do this. I don't want to hear you say you can't do it. I know you can. You got this. That's all we're doing. Pulling right to the center here that we just created for ourselves. Okay. That's it. That's how simple it is. 
I messed that up. <laughs> so I'm like, that's how simple it is. You do this. Um, yeah, so we're going to just keep doing that for the whole thing. Put your paintbrush where you want it to end, your flower. And then just pull it up. These are super simple flowers. I did seal this up with some glossy Mod Podge. I usually use my Dixie Bell sealer, but I'm out of that. It worked just fine. I hope you guys enjoyed this little paint with me. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And until next time.